Like, it's so great to see you and catch up. It feels like forever since we've seen each other in person. So what's been going on with you and training, especially now that everything's been closed and we're in a unique situation? Yeah, it's wild. <laughs> um, it's It's been okay. Um, I'm living with my older brother, Reed, and, and we're training together. So that's definitely, I'm very fortunate for that. I'm, that's definitely a positive. Um, obviously, bummed we couldn't do pro day. Um, but, you know, the draft will go on. And, um, you know, a lot of the guys at, at LSU um, had incredible seasons. And, and we're very fortunate to have that going for us um, as we approach the draft and, and knowing that those scouts we're at a lot of those games and, and saw us quite a bit. So, What's a normal day like for you, getting ready and training, preparing for the draft? I'm actually glad you asked because um, right now I have a lot of free time on my hands. <laughs> um, so when I'm not training, I am actually delivering groceries. Um, I, cool. Yeah, I picked up a job with uh, Shipped. And they, um, it's, it's kind of like Uber Eats or any of those other platforms on your cell phone where you can um, just turn it on and you go pick up groceries from the grocery store and deliver it to people who can't necessarily get out. Um, but I, I do my training in the morning. Uh, Reed and I go to the field and, and do some agility work with our trainer. Um, we lift um, as best we can, given the, the weights and the bands and all the right. stuff, the, the equipment that we do have. Um, and then after that, I, I, I get out and I just try to get out of the house and, and be productive because, um, if I'm just sitting around, I'll, I'll start playing video games or, or watching too much Netflix or just something that's not as productive. So, well, of course, Blake Ferguson is out delivering groceries and helping <laughs> you know this because you served on numerous LSU and SEC leadership and community service teams throughout your entire career at LSU. So why has giving back been so important to you as a student athlete? And now we're seeing you're doing this not as a student athlete. Yeah, um, I, think it's, I think it's cool just to use the platform that we do have as athletes to um, just make a difference. And every athlete is different. Everybody that has a platform is different for the, the causes that are important to them. But for me, I didn't pick up this grocery delivery job to make money. I don't, I don't need the money. I don't, that's not what I'm worried about. I want to help people who can't necessarily get out and go to the grocery store. There's, there's elderly people who need assistance, and, and I'm trying to help as best I can. So you played at a massive program in high school, and then you come and you sign on with LSU, and you've also got a brother in the NFL, Reed, like you mentioned earlier. When did it dawn on you that long snapper is what you wanted to do on the football field? I, I imagine that many kids grew up and say, that's the position I want to do, but you and Reed have really <laughs> held your own in that area. Yeah, long snapping isn't the, isn't the position that I necessarily chose when I first started playing football. Um, you know, I wanted to be the quarterback, the wide receiver, the, the playmaker. Um, but as I got older and, and through, I guess, middle school, I kind of realized, you know, I'm, I'm not going to be this genetic jackpot player where I'm the LeBron James of my, of my generation. I'm not, I'm not the biggest, I'm not the fastest, I'm not the strongest player out on the football field. And so I kind of had to find my niche if I wanted to continue playing. Um, and so that was something that I, I saw Reed do. And I, I knew that there was an opportunity for me to learn how to do it as well. Um, turned out to be decent at it and, and have continued to do it as best I can. So you've had an interesting ride at LSU starting while your brother still had that starting position as long snapper. You become a national champion. You get to then play under Greg McMahon, who has a Super Bowl ring, you know, as our special teams coordinator at LSU. So how much has your game grown since you've been at LSU? Yeah, it's been crazy. Just, um, just learning so much about the game of football. Um, I thought I knew quite a bit coming into college and um, especially since coach McMahon took over the special teams, I, I learned so much and I knew I wanted to play at the next level. And so um, I, I was trying to soak up as much knowledge from him. And, and even when we had coach April um, mm -hmm. as an analyst as well, just trying to learn from, from everybody that I could about what it's like playing at the next level and the different schemes and things like that. Um, those are important as well, but just in, in terms of being a pro and, and, um, the day-to-day -day life of a professional athlete. 
Okay, so let's get this out of the way real quick before I ask you another question about Reed. There are rumors that you are possibly better than Reed Ferguson out <laughs> on the football field. And, you know, he in, he's been snapping in the NFL, but you are a national champion, something that he does not have. So is there a consensus debate among you and your family of who's better? Or your family um, so nice that everybody everybody's equal. <laughs> We're a very competitive family, so it, it, it constantly is, is going back and forth with, with friendly banter. But, um, you know, we're very fortunate to have had the success that we've had. Um, you know, we were hoping last year that, that we could win a national championship and a Super Bowl in the same year because we went to the playoffs and so did the Buffalo Bills. Um, but, you know, um, we, learn, we learn from each other. Um, I've certainly learned a lot from him just having had him – as a role model for all these years, but um, it's definitely competitive in this household. So obviously having Reed as your brother has been very big for your collegiate career and will continue when you also make it in the NFL alongside him. But as you prep for the draft, how much do you pick his brain on certain topics or things you need to be focusing on? Every day, every day. I, I'm, I mean, I, that's why I'm living with him just to, to get as much knowledge and information and, and be as prepared as I can for when I go to, I mean, uh, we probably won't have OTAs and mini camp at this point, but um, training camp and then, and then my rookie season, just being as prepared as I can because he, he's been there before. He's, he, he knows how the process works. And um, I mean, who better to use as a resource than somebody that's done it before already. As the top, long snapper in the draft this year is it easy to get a sense of what teams need in a snapper that have interest in you right now um yeah I mean you kind of know uh based on on contracts and tenure of the snappers in the league who's kind of looking for snappers um especially guys that have that have been around been around a while that have tenure where that wherever they are um those teams are typically trying to find somebody that's similar to those guys to replace them. For example, um, Detroit's long snapper this year um, has been in the league for like 18 years or 17 years. And he's a big snapper. He's, he's big. He's like six, four, six, five, like two fifty. And they'll probably try to find somebody that's big and, and strong and, and similar to, to him to bring into training camp to compete with him. Um, you know, Houston has John Weeks, who um, is maybe not as big, but is a, a more of a weapon in coverage. And so there's different um, characteristics of snappers that the teams try to um, try to find and, and try to get out of um, the snappers coming out of the draft. But, you know, the best the best thing that I can do and the, the part that I'm trying to put my best foot forward in is just being as well-rounded as I can so that I can um, have as many opportunities to play at the next level as I can. Well, I don't think there's any doubt that you will be on an NFL roster. I remember when you signed somebody in the football office saying, you know, out of this freshman class, you've got a lot of good talent, but this is a guy that, you know, is going to be a commodity when it gets to his time in the draft. I'm certain you have your sights set on being drafted. You've talked to a bunch of teams. So what have those talks been like with teams wanting to grab you before that free agency period? Yeah, it's, um, it's really different for a snapper just because um, teams are hesitant to use a draft pick on a long snapper because typically um, they think or they see it as though they, that they can find a snapper in free agency following the draft. And so right now it's, it's about me and my agent um, doing the best that we can to to explain to them and show them why I'm the best snapper in the draft and why I'm um, draft worthy, uh, draft pick worthy. Um, you know, I, I put out a pro day video, um, though I couldn't have a pro day in Baton Rouge, I, I put out a pro day video and, and had that sent out to all the player personnel guys in the league and then all the special teams coordinators just to show them what I can do and show the improvement that I've made even from the combine until now. So. Um, just doing everything that I can to to really push them and and show them that you know this guy's not going to last long in the in the draft and they need to they need to trade up or they need to um, use a draft pick on me. Regardless of how you get on a roster, what do you think those emotions are going to be like for you when you when you get that spot? Yeah, it's crazy. Um, you know, as we get closer to the draft, I think we're 
two weeks tomorrow from, from the start of the draft, which is crazy to think about. But um, as we get closer, the, the kind of anticipation and, and anxiety builds up a little bit, just not really knowing where I'm going to be in six months. And, and that's not something that I've ever really experienced before. And so um, I'm excited. I, I know that wherever I go, I'm going to have to beat somebody out. I'm going to have to compete for the job. I'm not just going to walk in and be a starting long snapper on an NFL roster. And so that's something that I've been mentally preparing for and just trying to be as ready as I can, like I said earlier, um, for when I walk into training camp and, and try and win the job. So um, I'm, I'm super excited. Uh, this, is a, this is a fun but stressful process. And, um, you know, I, I would do it over again 100 times if I could because not many guys get to do this. I mean, you mentioned yourself not knowing where you're going to be in six months, but also your parents, because your parents have been splitting time between college games in Baton Rouge and every away game in the SEC and wherever else we've traveled since your career started at LSU and being in Buffalo in those away games with Reed. So, I mean, they've got more frequent flyer miles than anybody that I personally know, but now they've got to come up with a new plan of where they're going to be with both of y'all playing on Sundays. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know how they're going to do it. Um, whether they alternate weekends going to my game one weekend and then Reed's game the next or splitting and, and one going to one, one going to the other. Um, I'm not really sure how that's going to work, but Reed has said that he wants them to go to my games um, my rookie year because they've seen him play in the NFL and, and they think that he thinks that they should go to my games and, and see me play uh, because it's not something that happens very often. And so, um, that's kind of his stance, but I don't know how I don't know how well that'll work out. I don't know that my mom and dad could go an entire season without seeing Big, big Brother play. I don't. I, I don't <laughs> think that's going to happen. But it's, but, it's definitely a good problem to have. But I know that um, we're going to miss the Fergusons at LSU. Y'all have been a staple of our LSU family for a very long time now. So when you think about what you're going to miss – being at LSU, what are the things you're going to miss most about being a Tiger? Um, just miss being around the guys. I, I didn't, I didn't know what it was going to be like not being on that team anymore until um, just a couple weeks ago when I realized, man, like I saw the tweet that Joe put out about pro day and and the last time competing with with his guys, and and it really hit home to me because. Um, you know, we, we went through so much together and that team fought through a lot of adversity. Um, you know, one of the, one of the lowest and most embarrassing points in my career was being a captain for the Troy game. And I think about that game and how as an LSU Tiger, I never want to go back to that moment ever again. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I say I, but we, we fought through so much. We, I mean, just the, the constant battle and, and the, the mountain that we climbed to get to the top, um, what was kind of the, the most valuable part that I didn't realize um, at the time. But now that I'm looking back, I really appreciate that. And I think, I feel like that set all of us that are leaving the program this year up for success down the road. It's funny how perception changes as you get older. It does. It does. Absolutely. <laughs> Parents and a little and you're curly. Um, absolutely. So when you think about that team and you think about the other guys that are going alongside you this month preparing for the draft, what's kind of your good luck message to them or anything that you want to tell your other LSU teammates? You know, I love those guys. Um, I, I was happy to share the front row with them this year. And um it's a year that none of us will ever forget. It's a year that I'll look back on. I was, I was sharing with one of my buddies the other day that, you know, I've never had more fun playing football than I did this past season. And obviously a lot of that is, is due to the fact that we were 15 and 0 and, and we didn't even lose a game, but just being around a group of guys that cared about each other and loved each other like we did, um, you know, I'll, I'll carry that in my heart forever. And so just as we're preparing and, and the anxiety builds for the draft, you know, there's a brotherhood that's been set before us with NFL issue. Mm -hmm. And I'm excited for that to continue with this draft class as well. And lastly, another big part of that whole LSU experience are 
LSU fans. So anything that you would like to tell the LSU fans across the country after being at LSU for your career? Just thank you. Um, you know, we can't thank the fans enough for the constant support that we've had throughout the, the ups and the downs. And obviously it's, it's an incredible time to be an LSU Tiger having come off of a national championship season. But I think about, you know, the year we lost the Citrus Bowl to Notre Dame, like I still had fans, you know, hitting me up on social media, coming up to me after the game, just telling me go Tigers and, and how much they loved us and how much they supported us even, um, even after we lost the game. But, um, you know, just I can't thank the fans enough. And we as a, as a draft class and as a team can't thank the fans enough for, for all that they do for us. I still have, have LSU fans hitting me up social media every day talking about just how this was the best team ever and, and the, the, the fact that they'll carry that with them forever as well. So, Well, I know we will carry that team and you forever, and this will not be the last time we see you because I know there will be lots of visits in your future to LSU. So thank you so much. Good luck, and we can't wait to see at the end of the month where you go next. Absolutely. Happy to do it.